Hi, my name is Alex with Ape Tech, Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to plan the perfect sprint in Jura. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like if you like this video, and if you have any questions about anything that I talk about today, please let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Jura. Okay, so here we are in Jira. We are in a scrum board and I'm currently in the backlog. You'll see that my backlog is completely empty, which is where you typically want to start. So the good first step is to essentially start creating the stories that your team is going to be working on. Now there's a couple of different ways to create stories. You can either click the create button up here, bring up the modal, pick story, you could also just create an issue here using this inline entry. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways, uh, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to create a couple of issues here. So this is going to be story number one. So I'm just going to keep it simple with going with story number one, number two, and number three. Now, if you're a true Agilist, if you're just a true 100% Agile company, this is all you need. You need a backlog you populate it with stories. However, because I tend to like to use epics, I like to group and categorize the stories to the epic because not every story is created equal. I understand that epics is really just a bigger version of a story, but Jira gives you something pretty powerful here. Jira gives you this ability to nest these stories as children of a bigger purpose. And in my opinion, this is really cool. I think this is great for companies that maybe they're not 100% Agile and maybe they don't 100% drink the vanilla or Agile Purist playbook, but they need to do some planning. They want to do something that's a little bit more prescriptive with respect to how and which stories they sign up for. If you're in that camp, then the following is probably gonna be really beneficial for you. So the other way that I like to basically populate my backlog, again, just working from a top-down approach is I like to create an epic. And this is a great epic. And again, I'm not taking anything away from what Agile says. The, the epic is still a bigger story. It's a story that is going to take a very long time. And maybe you have multiple players contributing to this epic. And this is fine. I'm not taking anything away from that. All I'm doing is creating an epic. What I am going to do now is I'm going to click on this create child issue. And I am now going to create stories below it. I am going to decompose that big two plus week story, AKA my epic, and I'm gonna break it down into smaller, more manageable, more independent stories that then I can assign out to the team and the team can drive to completion within the sprint. So in following that super simple uh, formula that I was using for my other one, I'm just gonna go a story for epic one, a story for epic two and a story for epic three. So what you'll notice now when I go back to my backlog is that these epics exist, but they also have a label. And again, if you just have a massive backlog and you're following agile in the most purest of ways, this is fine. You don't need those epic labels, but if you're in a real team with the real deadlines and real priorities and everything's kind of a mess and everything's shifting, trust me when I'm telling you that this little epic label here is going to be a godsend because it helps you organize. It helps you understand, okay, why would I build on story one when I clearly have a dependency on some other major feature or capability being completed first? But if you're just looking at the story sometimes at face value, at just the the title, the summary of that story, you might not have the insight that you need in order to make the correct strategic decision for the plan. Agile principles aside, you still have to deliver a product and you still have to deliver it on time and on budget. And I don't understand why people don't like using epics in this way because it's a great way for you to again, categorize and organize yourself so that you're working on the most value added work in an easier way. So there's, it takes the guessing out of it. So anyways, uh, you'll notice that these first ones don't have an epic. And so essentially what I'm going to do now is I like to ensure that all my issues have an epic. I don't typically like to work on stories that are just orphans because to me, a story that's just an orphan 
is just wishful work. It's just work that some technical person, a software engineer, somebody in your company, they just want to work on and the story makes it into the backlog. When a story is tied to a bigger purpose, AKA the epic, then you can see more of the traceability. You can see the company vision, the goal, the product goal, whatever the product owner is, has been defining as being, this is the most critical functionality that we want out of this product. And now here's the traceability. Here's how I see it from the epic down to the story and down to the subtest, which we're gonna talk about in a second. So in order to kind of catch things up, I'm just gonna create another epic here by clicking on the create epic button. And I'm going to name it an epic of epic por proportions. And I'm gonna give it the summary. Now, if you haven't seen my video about the difference between epic name and summary, make sure you go watch that video because it, I, I explain what that is in that video. So coming back in here into the backlog, all I'm gonna do to associate these issues to my epic is I'm just gonna drag and drop them over here just so that they have an association to an epic, okay? So once you're at this point, you essentially have your stories. They are all categorized with an epic. Again, you can have, it's totally fine to just have stories in here, no association to epic. Again, if you're following just a pure agile vanilla methodology, then you probably don't use epics this way. I'm just showing that to you because in almost every team that I worked in within the last five years that actually do use Jira, that version of Agile does leverage this methodology because honestly, it's it's not a bad one. It, it, it just really, really, I can't tell you how many conversations or how many times we've avoided building the wrong thing because we knew, oh, this epic is more important or more valuable. Given that, you still have the ability to rank your backlog, so I can still move things around if a, if a story for whatever reason is more important than another one. And so Jira is still going to allow you to do that, but at least now you're doing it from a, a conscious place, right? Now you're understanding, okay, I understand this, as this story, this individual story as a standalone item is more valuable, but I at least still understand and I, I can be appreciative of where it's coming from. So that is how I create the backlog. Now, once you have items in the backlog, you're going to want to create your sprint. I recommend you only do one sprint at a time. I've seen many teams kind of start creating a bunch of sprints and then start populating the sprints from their backlog. I don't recommend that. That is now you're starting to really blur lines between waterfall and agile. You can't predict the future in agile. And, and so it's not a good practice to essentially like pre-populate and pre-create your sprints because you don't know what's going to happen. You have to literally live life one sprint at a time. So please, please, please refrain from creating a ton of sprints and then pre-populating them because that is not going to be healthy. You don't want to do that. So all you got to do at this point, once you have your sprint, is now you're going to start populating it. So now you're sitting in a sprint planning meeting with your team. You're the scrum master. You have your dev teams in the room. Uh, you've already worked with your product owner to get this backlog populated. You've ranked it with your, pro uh, with your product owner. And now it's going to be time to essentially plan the sprint. So to plan the sprint, super simple. You're just going to grab your story and you're going to drag it up to the sprint. That's one way. The second way is you can right click on it and send it to the sprint. And so you can do that for each item here. There is technically an easy way of bulk doing this by updating the sprint field. But I like to be very selective. I like to make sure that as we're taking each item from the backlog, as a team, as a collective, we're consciously agreeing and making a commitment of like, yeah, this is something that we all as a team accept and we, we're, we're going to commit to working on it. So that's the next step. Now, once you have items in your backlog, and this is gonna look a little silly just because it's a team of me, but I'm gonna highlight a couple of key things that you should be watching out for when you're planning your sprint. So one, if you're doing releases, if you're if you're a type of software shop where you're releasing version one, version two, version three, this is a great opportunity for you to also tie your stories to a release. And in Jira, you can define releases over here in the releases section. And once that release exists, it creates a version, which is not confusing at all. And then you come down over here to your uh, fields, you're going to go to more fields and eventually you're going to find this fixed version. Now this field, the fixed version can be anywhere on the right side. So in my specific video, I have it set up where it's empty unless there's a value in it. So I'm just going to come in here and fill it out. You can see I have my release number one 
and I'm going to just associate it. Now you see here in Jira that it's going to associate it. Again, if you're a natural purist, it probably doesn't have this in your playbook, but just know that this is another great way of, again, prioritizing and understanding the stories that I am working on for this sprint. They mean something. They belong to a greater good. And this is just helping with communication. This doesn't violate Agile in my opinion, but it does help the team understand this story that I'm working on is more important than a different story because I have an immediate need to get this out versus maybe I'm going to pull something in from the backlog that is for a future release or for a future priority. And again, this is just how you leverage the fields and the stuff that Jira gives to you as a Scrum Master, as a product owner, or even as a developer to make the most conscious decision of, am I building the right thing at the right time? In my opinion, if I'm running a business, this is something that I want my team thinking about and being able to uh, communicate. So here's the fixed version, here's the epics, here's the assignee. So a common mistake that I see here, which I'll talk about in a future video about my top three common mistakes of planning your sprint. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a like because you're gonna wanna watch that video, but I'll give you a little teaser. A common mistake is assignee. Now again, this is where the Agile peers are gonna come at me because in a true Scrum team, you have, the, you're supposed to plan your sprint but leave them unassigned because any member of your scrum team, any developer, they have the ability to do anybody's work. So in theory, your scrum team is supposed to be an independent, completely anybody within the team should be able to do anything that's in your sprint or anything that you're planning. And so on that foundation of that information, you should in theory not assign the work out because they should be able to have the autonomy to cherry pick whatever they want and go and work on it. That is great. I have been an implementer of delivering hundreds of millions of dollars worth of products in my career, and I have never seen that work. I have never, first of all, I've never seen a team where all the skill sets are equally balanced across the team that anybody can do anything. I've always been on teams where somebody has a special skill that another person doesn't have, and you're gonna have stories that are more appropriate for that one individual than anybody else in the team. So with that said, I like to assign my issues out. I like to make sure that before I hit the start sprint button, all these issues are assigned. And I do that for a couple of reasons. One, again, I kind of explained, I've never been on a team where everybody has the same skill set that they feel comfortable cherry picking and taking on any story. Typically, their skills within a team and some member is stronger in one skill and another team member is stronger in a different skill and they're gonna be more comfortable and they're gonna do it correctly, which I think is even more important. They're gonna do that item correctly because that's their domain, that's what they're good at. Two is accountability. I have seen, again, I've managed hundreds of millions of dollars worth of budgets here and I have seen that when stories go unassigned, that accountability goes away. Now, again, Scrum, makes a huge assumption that your team is built on trust, that your team is there for each other. It's a community, it's a family, it's this, this really tight-knit group of people that just bond and work so well together. Well, life doesn't always work that way. Life is usually not as pretty as Agile sometimes explains it. So there's always frictions at some point. And, and almost every team that I worked in, there's some level of friction and not assigning issues to somebody takes away that accountability and that commitment. And I have found that when projects are slipping, schedules are slipping, budgets are slipping, it is because people aren't committing and being accountable and being held responsible for the work that they're taking on. It is a lot easier to help somebody coach them and, and help them basically catch up and deliver on their commitments when you know who's supposed to work on something. So that's my little soapbox on assignees. And so hopefully uh, I don't get too much hate in the comment section, but I'd love to hear from you because the internet is a very interesting place and I'm sure you have a different opinion. I'm just giving you my opinion from actually using Jira for the last over five years to actually deliver very, very, very expensive products which accommodated or accounted for a huge percentage of the bottom line of the companies that I worked at. So if you're in that boat and you're actually into actually delivering uh, because you have a real commitment and a real hard line or a deadline or some date that needs to actually happen, this is that strategy. If you don't have any dates and you're just wishy-washy, go 100% agile, you're gonna be just fine. 
over here is the issue number this is the priority and then the last thing are story points so another thing that i like to highlight is please 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 don't start your sprint without filling in the story points if you just do the assignees or maybe you don't even do the assignees and you just start the sprint because you've populated your your sprint you're not going to get the best results because you don't know if the work in this sprint is appropriate for your team so you want to leverage your story point field which is here and let me just show you what that looks like when you actually populate it and you put in a number you'll notice that it shows up so you want to make sure every story here has story points and i'm just going to randomly put in some story points for the purposes of this demo and to try to keep it short but Fibonacci, the style that i like to use if you use something else, use whatever is appropriate for you and your team. What's important is that you're using numbers that make sense for you and your organization. And I'm going to do a whole separate video on just uh, story points because story points is a very controversial topic. I have yet to see any two teams out of all the teams that I've coached. And I've probably been with 50 to 60 teams at this point. I have yet to see any two teams use the story points exactly the same. So here we are. We have a full sprint. Everything is assigned. Things belong to Epic. Some things have fixed versions. Some things don't. That's fine. Uh, we see down here the total number of issues going into the sprint, which is good. You want to see this. You, As a team, you have a velocity, and this number should be close to that velocity as possible. My rule of thumb is usually 80 to 100%. If, and I did this kind of quickly, if you click on these ellipses, obviously you're just going to look a little differently because you're going to have different team members. But if you click on this, you're going to see every team member. You're going to see how many issues are assigned to them and how many points are assigned to them. You want to be very prescriptive here, or at least think about this for half a second, because this is going to give you that insight as to, is my team appropriately tasked for the sprint? And am I setting them up for success or for failure? And if you over assign or over commit your team members then you're probably going to be setting your spin up for failure a good rule of thumb is if this is your very first sprint you probably want to shoot for 50 percent of the capacity you probably still don't know what capacity is at that point but go do your research i'll do separate videos on capacities and estimating and all that stuff so make sure you're subscribed make sure you drop a like but nonetheless i typically like to promote 80 percent of whatever the capacity is so you want to look at these numbers here. And again, these numbers are going to vary from team to team, just depending on what your estimating strategy is. And so once you have that, one other little thing that I want to highlight before I close this video out is Jira has introduced this new thing called an insight. And this insight, given your previous sprints commitments and what they've actually been able to do, Jira is going to know if you're on target. That's going to be able to help guide you and say, hey, over the last couple of sprints, you've been able to finish these amount of points. So you're either over, you're under, or you're just on target. So very Goldilocks with this issue here. And so this is the kind of cool thing. So come and look at this because it's, again, it takes the guesswork out of like, is my team appropriately tasked? Are, are we setting ourselves up for success or for failure? This insight here will be able to show you that. And if you want me to show you more on the insights, just let me know in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to drop a video for that. And this is pretty much it. Once you've done this, the last thing you're going to want to do is click the start sprint button. You're going to give it a different name if you want to. The default is, I think, two weeks or not. This is definitely more than two weeks. So I'm just going to drop it to two weeks as a default. It'll go from today through March 19th. Now, if you do practice uh, sprint goals, go ahead, put your sprint goal here. So again, if your team uses the sprint goal, put it here. If not, that's cool too. It's not a required field. And that's it. You are now in the active sprint and your team is now free to basically update their stories. So if you haven't already, please smash that subscribe button, drop a like, drop a comment if you have any questions about anything. And stay tuned because in my next video, I'm going to show you how I use Jira to run my daily scrum. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.